ஹாலிடேஸ் நாளே அது நம்ம ஜி டி ஹாலிடேஸ் தான் ஜி டி ஹாலிடேஸ் சவுத் இந்தியாஸ் நம்பர் ஒன் டிராவல் பிராண்ட் யூ நோ யூ ஆர் ஸ்பெஷல் வென் யூ ஆர் வித் ஜி டி ஹாலிடேஸ் லைக்கா ப்ரொடக்ஷன் சுபாஷ் கரன் மற்றும் மெட்ராஸ் டாக்கிஸ் வழங்கும் மணிரத்னம் இயக்கத்தில் பொன்னியின் செல்வன் பாகம் இரண்டு ஏப்ரல் இருபத்தி எட்டு முதல் உங்கள் அபிமான திரையரங்குகளில் உங்கள் அரசியல் லட்சியத்தை அடைய பியூர் பாலிடிக்ஸ் பயிற்சி பட்டறை நேரடி மற்றும் இணைய வழி மே ஒன்று முதல் பதினைந்து வரை இரவு ஏழு மணிக்கு தொடர்புக்கு ஏழு தலைமுறைகள் பாரம்பரிய மிக்க ஒரே சித்த மருத்துவ ஸ்தாபனம் சேலம் சிவராஜ் சித்த வைத்தியசாலை இப்பொழுது சேலம் ஈரோடு சென்னை ஹொசூர் திருப்பத்தூரில் தினசரி மருத்துவரை சந்திக்கலாம் தொடர்புக்கு நைன் எல்லாமே இருக்கு நல்லாவே இருக்கு இப்பொழுது தாம்பரத்திலும் ஜெயச்சந்திரன் டெக்ஸ்டைல்ஸ் அனைத்து வகையான மசாலா பொருட்கள் அரைக்கும் இயந்திரங்கள் சுத்தம் செய்யும் இயந்திரங்கள் காஃபி கொட்டை அரைக்கும் இயந்திரங்கள் இட்லி தோசை மாவு அரைக்கும் இயந்திரங்களின் மொத்த விற்பனையாளர் ஸ்ரீ கணேஷ் மில்ஸ்ட்ரோஸ் கோயம்புத்தூர் தினம்தோறும் விளக்கேற்ற நல்ல எண்ணெய் இதயம் நல்லெண்ணெய் is now happening in 40 months you are telling, for you are you are telling the karnataka is benefited with the double engine government uh, i i take it in other way uh, in this two minutes interview you mentioned the prime minister's name four times in bjp pandey ji there is a culture where senior leaders veteran leaders voluntarily after certain time make way and make space for next generation leaders younger generation leaders and they groom them because we are a cadre based party and this next, next generation of the same family so uh, in uh, in sir, sir, of, uh, after, sir, after, after the rajiv gandhi if sonia gandhi comes it is nepotism after sonia gandhi if rahul gandhi comes it is nepotism after yediyurappa if vijayendra comes that is next generation not the nepotism why are you not focusing on our bjp candidate in our coastal karnataka in bindu his name is gururaj ganti hole even today he doesn't wear uh, even slippers my uh, uh, respect for annamalai ever uh, a secret i am even now telling that he has come as a god sent uh, a messenger for வணக்கம் அன்பு நண்பர்களை மீண்டும் உங்களை சந்திப்பது மிகுந்த மகிழ்ச்சி இன்றைய நேர்காணல் நிகழ்ச்சி நம்முடைய மிக முக்கியமான பிரமுகர் இருக்கார் ஒரு ராஷ்ட்ரிய ஸ்வயம் சேவக் அண்ட் ஒரு வக்கீல் லாயர் அண்ட் இன்றைய கர்நாடகா பாஜகவுடைய முகம் நாளைய தேசிய பாஜகவுடைய முகம் பாராளுமன்ற உறுப்பினர் பாரதிய ஜனதா கட்சியுடைய யுவா மோர்ச்சா இளைஞரனுடைய தேசிய தலைவர் திரு தேஜஸ்வி சூர்யா நம்மோடு இருக்கிறார் அவரிடம் கேட்பது நிறைய கேட்கலாம் வணக்கம் சார் வணக்கம் சார் நல்லா இருக்கீங்களா சார் காட்ஸ் கிரே சார் வித் ஆல் யுவர் சப்போர்ட் அண்ட் கிரேட் கோயிங் சார் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் வாண்ட் டு கம் டு த கர்நாடக எலெக்ஷன்ஸ் டைரக்ட்லி சார் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் வாண்டட் டு நோ ஹவு யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு வின் த கர்நாடகா ஸ்டேட் அசம்பிளி எலெக்ஷன் ஆஃப்டர் ஆல் யுவர் ரூலிங் டைம் ரங்கராஜன் சார் இன் த லாஸ்ட் த்ரீ அண்ட் ஹாஃப் இயர்ஸ் தி டபுள் இன்ஜின் கவர்மெண்ட் ஹேஸ் பர்ஃபார்ம்ட் வெரி வெல் இன் கர்நாடகா எஸ்பெஷலி தி double engine government has solved many legacy issues sir uh, under the leadership of the honorable prime minister narendra modi ji and here yadurappa ji and bommai ji many issues sir which were pending from almost two decades three decades have been very effectively addressed let me first give you example of just bengaluru sir sir bengaluru was neglected in terms of its urban mobility and infrastructure by previous governments but this double engine government has tried to address the urban infrastructure of bengaluru in a very important fashion the suburban rail project was pending from 40 years nothing had moved in that regard but now work is happening and the prime minister has promised to complete the suburban rail project in 40 months what had not happened in 40 years is now happening in 40 months you, you are you are telling you are telling the karnataka has benefited with the double engine government uh, i i take it in other way 
in this two minutes interview you mentioned the prime minister's name four times so still the government the bjp even in karnataka is relying on prime minister not on any local leaders sir i also mentioned yadurappa ji's name i also mentioned bommai ji's name sir you didn't perhaps hear it properly sir there is some internet connection also at my end that is a little problem but sir both of our leaders that is why i keep using the word double engine government sir and unlike say now in tamil nadu where prime minister tries to push for all development in tamil nadu but the state government there puts a road block in karnataka it it is it is complementary work i will give you another example i gave the example of suburban rail i will give you one more example the irrigation projects in karnataka both upper bhadra project as well as mahadai project they were pending from so many decades but because of double engine government central government granted 5300 crores state government has granted few thousand crores because of that now both these projects are getting executed this was pending from so many decades i will give one other example sir the constituency assembly constituency parliamentary constituency of congress president mallikarjun kharge ji sir before 2019 the water tap connection in the whole of kalburgi parliamentary constituency was only 16% sir from 1947 to 2019 only 16% of all households had got tap connection water water in in you know under the nal ki jal scheme but just in the last 3 and a half years from 16% it has risen to 58% this is the effect of the double engine government sir so whether it is irrigation sir, e- 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 even 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 now you are always, even now you are having you are mentioning all the central government schemes i don't uh, i i would like to hear something about your state government because now what we see from congress they are criticizing the bjp government as a 40 percentage government you know why they are calling you like that because the Pardon they are sir. blaming that all Pardon the government sir, tenders they ask for 40 yes. percent commission that is the charge they put on you i will i will address that sir pandey sir you are a very senior and very respected journalist you are aware that all the programs whether it is central government programs state government programs the state government is the executing agency sir so without the effective state government whichever good central government scheme will not be reaching the masses on the ground so the success of all of these central government schemes is the result of the effective state government here in addition to that sir to address your question of the corruption sir who is making this allegation it is the congress party which is making this allegation and in politics and in journalism credibility matters a lot what is the credibility of the congress the state president of the congress party who is making this allegation of corruption he is himself out on bail on in corruption cases the congress national president former national president and the both sonia gandhi and rahul gandhi are out on bail in corruption cases And, 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 and sir, you are aware that your own party, your own government, uh, Lok Ayukta is chasing your own MLAs. Exactly, sir. That is the point I am coming at. Please give me thirty seconds. I will tell you why that happened, sir. Sir, when Siddharamaiya was the chief minister, this very effective anti-corruption body called Lok Ayukta, afraid that it will catch the culprits in his own government. he dismantled and deliberately destroyed that institution and in its place he created an illegal institution called acb just last year the order of setting up this acb this whole act of setting up this parallel uh, corruption anti corruption body called acb which was supposed to report to the chief minister the high court of karnataka quashed it and held it as unconstitutional what we did sir was we reinstated powers to the lok ayukta as a result of that corruption whether it is done by bjp congress jds whoever the lok ayukta now has a free hand to take action against them which is precisely why even a bjp corrupt mla was caught by lok ayukta if there was no uh, if there was acb in its place the acb that siddaramaiah had created if it was continuing then this corruption of this bjp mla would not have come out at all the reason that it came out 
was because the BJP created this strong Lokayukta after the court quashed the ACB, which was set up by Siddharamaya to dilute the powers of Lokayukta, we reinstated the Lokayukta with all powers. Which is why so here, he, here you, you take then, then here you take credit Loka for Lokayukta, uh, or you feel Loka sad about your MLA? In prosecuting our BJP, our BJP MLA, there is zero tolerance for corruption today. In so far as BJP government is concerned, Pandit here you here, here you take credit for Lokayukta, or you feel sad bad about uh, your MLA? Sir, we have zero tolerance for corruption. That is our policy. It is the policy of the government in state government. It is the policy of the party in central government. The point I am trying to make, which I want you to kindly appreciate, sir, is this. When the Congress was in power, they destroyed the anti-corruption agency. And in its place, they introduced a puppet. And the High Court quashed that puppet. We reinforced, we brought back all the powers to the Lokayukta. So much so that the Lokayukta has so much independence that it can go against a ruling party MLA if he is corrupt and the party or the government does not come in his support. That is our position. Do, 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 will, do you, you, would you disagree with me? If, please, if, ask, you, please ask the Congress party leaders. Satin, yes, yes, would, would, would you disagree sir, there? Would you disagree sir, if I call sir, that there is an anti incumbency in Karnataka government? The people are not again. that much happy with that because you are the I ruling one. I want to just complete this point. Sir, in a democracy, opposition parties have a very important and responsible role to play. My demand and my request rather from the Congress party is this. If you have evidence of corruption, why are you silent? Why don't you go to courts? Why don't you go to the high court? Why don't you go to Lokayukta? Why don't you file a PCR? Why don't you go to the Supreme Court? Go to the CAG. You don't go to any of these authorities. You don't produce a single piece of evidence before any court or any authority. You come in front of the media and you only call, uh, you know, uh, do press conferences. And start Be because the Congress, as as because the Congress party, party blames BJP that you have diluted all the central agencies and independent bodies, including CBA, Enforcement Department, CAG, everything. That's so what they blame on you. If you have no, if you have no faith on any of the agencies, any of the central government authorities, and by the way, CAG is an independent authority, but they don't believe it. Why don't they go to Supreme Court? Why don't they go to the High Court? Pandeji, the problem with the Congress Party today is this: if they win elections, then the EVM is working properly. If they lose elections, then the EVM is not working properly. Election Commission is not working properly. If they get a court order which is in their favor, then Supreme Court is working fine and the Supreme Court is independent. But if there is a judgment that goes against Rahul Gandhi, then Indian courts are all compromised. You cannot have the cake and eat it too, sir. These double standards people of the country will not buy. Everybody respects the country's judiciary. My demand is, as a responsible opposition, it is your duty to expose the shortcomings of the government. If you don't do, you are failing in your duty as responsible opposition. Even you, you, know, you, you know very well that, Tejas uh, sir, you know very well that we cannot prove every allegation in the court. We, we, uh, till now, we are not able to prove a 2G case. That was a huge hangama throughout Indian parliament, Indian um, uh, politics and everything. Now, all the accused who were all in 2G case, they are all free now. So you, you know that proving in a court is a completely different process. Pandeji, but the process, there is a due process in the country that should be followed. The due process takes place in the courts of the country. There is a FIR that is filed, then there is a charge sheet, then there are arguments that are made. So this process should be respected. Otherwise, everything becomes about, you know, calling names, calling, you know, running these social media campaigns. That is not how a government can function. Now you the, the, evidence, then you should go to court. Now the if Karnataka you media then you should now start defaming people. Yes, sir. Now the Karnataka media and the neutral analysts they say that the, the Karnataka BJP government is suffering from anti incumbency There is no tall leader after Yadiropa. So they only asked him to retire. Now they are going to his house and asking his support that only he can save the party and government. So there is no um, um, uh, tall leader after Yadiropa and there is a huge anti incumbency What is your response, sir? Pandeji, first of all, I want to add and submit that 
this whole he was not asked to retire he was not removed in bjp pandey ji there is a culture where senior leaders veteran leaders voluntarily after certain time make way and make space for next generation leaders younger generation leaders and they groom them because we are a cadre based party and next next generation of the same family next generation of the same family parties do not appreciate or understand this culture because in those parties they are all family based parties which is why today even in the congress what 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 sir tejas is sir what what about edi rupa sir family what about edi rupa sir family is one son is mp his other son is vice president of the party he is contesting in the election so when it is about congress we used to call it nepotism when it is bjp it is the next generation family was given an opportunity he retired from politics electoral politics and then his another son was given an opportunity sir in bjp in just in this time see this culture sir senior leader edurappa ji he is our tallest leader he voluntarily took a step back from uh, electoral politics ishwarappa ji another very tall leader who built the party in karnataka he has voluntarily gone back and given space for another younger karyakarta our haladi shrinivas shetty a very respected leader in coastal karnataka he went a step back and he has encouraged another youngster to come sir this is a culture that must be encouraged this is a culture that other parties must start following so uh, in uh, in sir, of, uh, 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 sir after rajiv gandhi if sonia gandhi it comes it is nepotism after sonia gandhi if rahul gandhi comes it is nepotism after edi europa if vijayendra comes that is next generation not the nepotism how we can sir, uh, sir, sir edi europa sir in, in karnataka with edi europa ji's case it is just in one case there are 226 constituencies 72 new people have come 72 new people have come why are you not focusing on them you are focusing on only edurappa ji sir because you are focusing sir, only on rahul gandhi sir, please focus sir no i will give you a list sir of all in every cons- in my own assembly constituency parliamentary constituency in four seats father and son father and daughter this is the state of the congress in all levels why are you not focusing on our bjp candidate in our coastal karnataka in bindur his name is gururaj ganti hole even today he doesn't wear uh, even slippers why don't you focus on that fellow why don't you focus on bhagirathi murulya a very poor adi dravida community woman who was earlier the jilla panchayat member even today she lives in a thatched hut she is our candidate from that from that constituency from sulya there are so many young yuva morcha karyakartas who have got an opportunity to contest who come from zero political background so when there are about 17 new people who have got an opportunity if you choose only to focus on only edurappa ji son and not on the 50 to 60 young people who are not political background people who form the major chunk then it is very unfair sir uh, people say you still rely on prime minister and you are relying on the junior most politician called mr annamalai who is the state president of tamil nadu bjp you are relying on them bjp karnataka is not having a tall leaders after edurappa they don't have any face to show they don't have a chief minister candidate they are completely in mess that's the charge they blame I blame on you sir the honorable prime minister narendra modi ji is one of the most loved most respected politician across the country more so in karnataka if you have seen in 2014 and in 2019 people of karnataka in mass has voted for modi ji 25 mps were selected and the vote margins only got higher and higher compared to 2014 and 2019 if the congress does not have a tall national leader it is not our problem sir if rahul gandhi comes to campaign in our constituency votes for bjp increase automatically it is not our problem so if uh, uh, the, the today the problem is that the congress does not have leaders but they have a problem with bjp having leaders it is not our responsibility to be producing good strong leaders for the opposition it is the opposition's leadership and in so far as anna malai is concerned i can tell you anna malai is as popular in karnataka as much as popular he is in tamil nadu in every constituency in karnataka he is in great demand for campaigning just in bengaluru pandey ji you are aware 
that there are at least 20 lakh Tamil speaking voters in Bengaluru. In every constituency, our karakartas are calling and asking for give half an hour time of Annamalaji, give one day Annamalaji for two constituencies. Whether it is young leaders like Annamalai or whether it is veteran leaders like uh, Narendra Modi ji, we have a culture where new leaders are created. We are, we are a party that creates and grooms leaders. If this culture is not there in the Congress party, this is the condition, this is the state with which they will, they will keep uh, fiddling their thumb. That okay, no, 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 now, now, now do you have a chief minister candidate there? Can you, can you assure the um, uh, voters that only the Basaraj Bomeji will be the uh, chief minister even after winning? Sorry, I didn't hear your question. Yeah, uh, now whether you are pushing the chief minister candidate, can you assure that Basaraj Bomeji will be the chief minister in, even after winning? No doubt about this at all. There is no question of any discussion at all. In the last one and a half years, because it is only one and a half years time that Bommai ji got, he has been an exceedingly well-performing chief minister. He has solved many legacy issues, whether it is irrigation, whether it is internal reservations, whether it is, uh, you know, social justice, so many issues Bommai has solved in just one and a half years. So there is no question of change of leadership. He is our leader. We, will, we are going to elections in his uh, chief ministership and he will continue to lead us. Congress always used to blame you on the Hindutva issue. You always put the Hindutva first in the election mode. Uh, recently, your government scrapped the 4% reservation for Muslims. And now, it has been uh, seemed to be right, uh, Karnataka Congress position, by Supreme Court of India that they can strike down your order. So, uh, only just yes, days, days, days before the elections, you started scrapping the Muslim reservation. Is it good for that? You wanted to push the Hindu only? Pandey sir, I want to factually make an uh, intervention here. Supreme Court has not struck down any order, sir. Supreme Court has not struck down any they order. They have instructed to not take any decision till the election completes. Sir, they have. it is not the Supreme Court, sir. The state government has volunteered because the elections are going on. They don't want to take any election, that any decision. That does not mean that the Supreme Court has passed its verdict or held this decision as wrong. Or then, then, then why you are scrapping down the reservation and why you are promising the Supreme Court that we will not take any action? What is the purpose? Sir, the Supreme Court is deciding a very sensitive matter during the election time. The Supreme Court will pass its verdict after listening to the, uh, the arguments of both sides after the elections. So until then, to maintain the status quo is the right thing to do. But our intent is very clear that at multiple occasions, the Supreme Court and various high courts have held that giving reservations only and only on the basis of religion is unconstitutional and illegal. From 1994 till now, this illegal practice continued in Karnataka. What we have done is correct this con uh, unconstitutional practice. We have tried to rectify this constitutional anomaly and in its place we have brought in a scheme which is not only constitutional but is truly reflective of social justice. You, 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 you know, know, the, you, you know that, that Supreme, Supreme Court, Court is the guardian of the constitution. You, you know, know very well that Supreme, Supreme Court is the JDS. The question sir, is sir, then as to why did you introduce, knowing fully well, why did you introduce an illegal unconstitutional reservation sir you, you, sir you are aware being a lawyer you are aware that the supreme court is the guardian of the constitution if it is illegal and unconstitutional they might have strike down it already it is already existing more than a decade then the supreme there court is not so the supreme court pandey ji there are many instances in this country which will be struck down only when it is brought to the notice of the court this time it came to the attention of the government. The moment it has come to attention of the government, we have scrapped it and we have taken executive action towards it. This executive action is being scrutinized by the Supreme Court and we are very confident that it will be in our favor. Because the Supreme Court itself in many occasions has held that religion-based reservation is unconstitutional.
Uh, what we learned from Karnataka uh, Manalis, uh, we are getting that Karnataka Congress in a very jubilant mood that people, tall leaders from you, like Jagdish Shaddar and Lakshman Chavadi, they are moving to Congress. Normally, in every election, we can see whether it's a West Bengal or any other state, we can see that normally the stars and opposition party leaders, they will come to your party. Here, from your party, they are moving towards Congress party. So, the Congress party is in a jubilant mood and you are the damage control mode. Is it so, sir? Pandey, sir, you are... You have seen the BJP from close. BJP is a cadre based party. It is not a leader based party. So as long as the cadre is strong in any constituency in the state, there is no problem for the BJP. In both the constituencies that you mentioned, BJP is going to win with a thumping majority because in both these constituencies, the cadre is very strong, inspired and is with the BJP. It is not about the leaders, you are losing something. It is not only, I am not talking about the particular constituency, but the leaders moving to, against you, your own party leaders. Sir, some leaders have, even though they have got all opportunities, they have, you know, got opportunities to serve and lead the party for 30 years. Some leaders have taken a decision to go to Congress party. It is their uh, uh, decision. People of that constituency and the BJP cadre of that constituency will do their work and on the 13th of May, I am very confident in all of these constituencies, the BJP will register a record victory, sir. Only three short questions, sir. Uh, I will wind up there. So, all the predictions as of now say that there will be only hung assembly, nobody will get the majority. Your comment, sir. All of these political analysts and these surveys are wrong. Very comfortable majority the BJP will get on the 13th of May, we will form the government on our own capacity, very sure about this, sir. I have traveled to more than 50 assembly constituencies myself in the, in, the, in the state. With guarantee, I can tell you the positive mood, the upbeat mood is in favor of the BJP. People have already decided to vote for the BJP. We are going to very comfortably cross the halfway mark. So I will request one more interview after the election. Sir, we will do an interview on the day of the result itself, sir. So, thank you very much. And my last but uh, the last question. Uh, the recent controversy about the Tamil Thai Walto. Uh, when uh, Iswarapanji was there and Mr. Anamalaji was also there, there Tamil Thai Walto played. And you know that that particular area was a full Tamil dominant area. So obviously they started Tamil Thai Walto and Mr. Iswarapa stopped that. Mr. Anamalaji here is saying that uh, normally in any state, that state the anthem should be sung first, only then other songs has to be done. But in that case, Tamil Thai Walto stopped. And Karnataka bam, bam, um, uh, anthem were played. After that, Tamil Nadu they didn't play. So the people here say all the parties say that that's an insult to the Tamil Nadu world. Sir, it is very wrong to approach that issue that way. The BJP is a national party which respects the sentiments of all regions, religions, and languages. In Karnataka, naturally, the first anthem that should be played is the Kannada anthem. And then all other state anthems are respected. In the same way in Tamil Nadu, if there is a program that happens, the first Tamil anthem should be played and then Kannada program or any other Kannada song should be played. Which is, this is a party that respects all languages. This is the first time the Prime Minister has taken so much initiative and lead to popularize, celebrate the rich traditions and languages of both Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and other regional languages of India. These kind of issues of trying to manufacture fake controversies, fake issues, which divide the society, we must frown upon them. We must not entertain these kind of debates much, sir. So, what they say, there is no need of Tamil anthem at all. It was not a government person. It's a political event. So there was no need of why you are playing and why you are stopping, why you are creating all this kind of, that was the question, sir. Sir, which is what I am telling, out of... Respect for the local Tamil people there, out of respect for Tamil Nadu, out of respect for Tamil language, naturally some organizers would have taken that initiative. Should we say they are wrong? Of course not. If tomorrow uh, there is a, some program that is happening in Tamil Nadu of Kannada people, if out of enthusiasm the Tamil people, the Kannada speaking people there play a, a anthem of Karnataka, should they be? It, should it be considered that they are uh, wrong? In the same way, if these people, the Tamil speaking people in Karnataka, if they play Tamil uh, uh, anthem, does it mean that they are any less patriotic towards Karnataka? 
This is very wrong, sir. We are all Indians. But it was soft to be a tall leader, sir. Sir, sir we, we, all, we are all Indians. We respect our country. Whether you are a Tamilian, whether you are a Kannadiga, whether you are a Punjabi, we are all Indians first. We respect that identity first. Totally and all of our state languages, all of our state anthems, this is something that binds us together. Religion, language, these are things which should bind us, not divide us. Therefore, these are issues which must not be continued, sir. So, so very recently in the Twitter spaces, you said that in Tamil Nadu, the ADMK is in a declining mode. It has not, it is not having a great future. Now, uh, it is, seems to be that you have completely tied up with the ADMK and the future uh, 2024 uh, Lok Sabha elections going to be uh, contested with the ADMK. So, uh, do you want to take back your comment on ADMK and its future? Sir, I had not said about ADMK, sir. You said what about the Revenue parties in the, uh, in the Twitter space, you know, that, that they don't have any great future here. No, 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 sir. I had spoken about DMK, sir. I had spoken and I had told that in Tamil Nadu, under Annamalai, there is a new transformation that is taking place. A new space is being captured. A lot of young people who are hitherto not interested in politics are now approaching this politics. And there is a different model of politics and government that governance that we are showcasing, which is very different from the Dravidian model. So now that we have the alliance going, I am very confident that in 2024 and even later, we will perform exceedingly well. And I, am, I, am, I have never made my admiration for Annamalai, my uh, uh, respect for Annamalai ever uh, a secret. I am even now telling that he has come as a godsend uh, a messenger for new governance, good governance and positive growth for Tamil Nadu. I have seen even in Karnataka, in my own parliamentary constituency, there are lakhs of Tamil speaking people who are waiting for a chance to vote for Annamalai in Tamil Nadu elections. That is the new fresh energy that he has brought. Thank you very much, Tejuji. Thank you very much for your time and I'm very thankful to you. Thank you so much, Pandeji. All the very best to you. And you are one of the most respected journalists, whether you are, uh, whether it is, you know, asking strong questions to BJP, DMK, ADMK, irrespective of the party, impartially, you are a journalist known for your forthright questions and impartiality. A lot of respect for you, Pandeji. All the very best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.